everyone what's up i am carolise and today i'm going to be sharing with you how you can land your very first business analyst job i'm going to go play my intro so come right back it's going to be great we're going to have a good discussion so i'll see you in a second So you are here because you want to get your first business analyst job. You probably have absolutely no experience as a business analyst before, but you want to break into this field. Actually, you are in the right place. I am Carolise and I make videos to help people just like you start their business analyst career and also people who are already working as business analysts to help them grow in their career. I have been working as a business analyst since 2011, so I have a lot of experience under my belt from different industries, and I'm willing to share that with you so that you also can become a successful business analyst and grow and learn in this field as well. So if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing, and if you like this video in particular, please like the video and leave a comment below. Now let's get into it. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's going to be easy. Just go out there and apply and be optimistic. It's going to work out. I mean, I will give you some inspiration, but it's not going to be easy. Let me just tell you that right now. You are trying to brute force your way into a whole new career with nothing. You have no experience. You don't know anything about business analysis in the field you have no field experience no practical experience and you you want to become a business analyst that is hard but it's not impossible you can do this if you follow certain strategies that i'm going to share with you right now so first of all you have to get the knowledge i just talked about having practical field experience you will not have that we know that but you can go get the knowledge which is available from the Babak. So here it is on Amazon. You literally need to have a copy of this book. It is the guide to the business analyst body of knowledge. And you need to be very familiar with it to know how to apply the techniques, to understand the lingo, to understand the process. You need to learn these things, even though you're not gonna apply it right away. You need to get that book learning because it's gonna help you when you get the job to say, oh, this is why they talked about that. Oh, and so you can connect the dots faster when you get the job because you already had that background knowledge from the book. Does that make sense? You need the knowledge. Now, you don't have to go get your certification. You don't need the ECBA to get your first job. It doesn't hurt though. It doesn't hurt to have it, but you don't really have to stress yourself to go do the ECBA certification. If you don't have a certification, you can't apply and you start feeling flustered. You don't need to go through all that. You can do some courses. There are some good courses out there on Udemy, Coursera, and other places. There are many people offer business analyst course. You can consider doing one of those. You just need to get the ground knowledge there. These are things that you may not learn in your college if you did some other degree, maybe business administration or IT or something. You may not get the business analyst specific information from your college courses. Um, and if you were working before in a different field, you certainly don't have it. So you need to go get that. That is going to be your basis, right? It's going to give you the ground information that you need to be able to speak to business analysis when you get in front of an interviewer. Please, please get the book and read it, follow it, do the examples. I can link some other books below that will have some exercises for you to just practice and understand the world of business analyst. Now, once you have that kind of ground knowledge and feel kind of comfortable with what you've learned in the books or the courses or whatever you did to get that knowledge gap filled, then you obviously need to apply. You cannot get your first job unless you apply, right? Obviously, you have to apply. But while you're applying, you're going to use these strategies. The first thing is you know that you don't have any experience. You know that. So what you have to do is you have to drown out your inexperience with other activities that you're doing in the business analysis realm. How do you do this? You want to be as active as you can in all the different places or 
areas that you can. For example, IIBA is a wonderful, wonderful resource for this. They are always looking for volunteers, always. So you can volunteer at the IIBA, which is the Institute, International Institute of Business Analysts. They have chapters almost in every city in the US. And if you're outside of the US, you can see if there's any chapters locally to you. And you go to the chapter meetings, you meet with people, you network with people, you learn about things because they always have panelists coming in talking about different topics. It's a very interactive group. They like to share things. So you go there. I think it was like uh, $10 to get in, but you pay for the international membership and then you pay to, to be a part of the, the local chapters. But it's a small price to pay for what you're going to get, right? So you pay, you go in. You learn and they're always looking for volunteers. So you volunteer, volunteer because that can go on your resume as your IIBA volunteer. And then when you're, once you're in there, they're always looking for positions. So people might do, in, you know, they may be president, they may be president of something else and there are different committees and stuff, but people do short term tenure because it's, it's volunteer work, right? So people are always, they're always changing out the leadership. Um, you could be, doing something like that you could be volunteering and get a position there and even though it's it's free for you to do it helps you because now you put this on your resume it gives you authority you understand it gives you uh, um it makes you look like you're so interested in business analysis that you're willing to do all these activities around business analysis and that will help you because you don't have experience so if you can get other things on your resume that speak to business analysis that will be in your favor the other thing is you can look for meetup groups. Meetup is an app that's very popular here in the United States where people can have different groups and they meet, they physically meet somewhere and sit and chat and talk and exchange and things like that. So if you have meetup, you can see if there's any meetup for business analysts in your area. You go there, you network with people, you talk with people, you get in people's, you know, you get in people's world and you understand who they are. They can get to know you, put a face to the application. You could eventually hear about a job there. You could be able to email them your resume. You know, you never know who you'll meet. So these are ways that you can expose yourself yourself to business analysts these are ways that you can get more information the biggest benefit here is not that they're going to give you a job it's that you're going to be in the world of business analysts you're going to immerse yourself with business analysts and you're going to learn different terms different lingo things are going to start popping into your brain that you wouldn't have thought about by yourself so if you go into this world when you get into the interview and you're sitting in front of an interviewer you can speak the, la the language you can speak the language of the business analyst because you've been exposing yourself to them. And not to belabor this point, but you can also listen to podcasts. You follow channels like mine that talk about business analysis. There are other channels out there also that are pretty good, but just keep yourself in the world, okay? Go look for LinkedIn groups because sometimes they advertise jobs on these LinkedIn groups. They advertise jobs in the Facebook groups. Go join these groups, be a part of the, the, the community, learn the different things. Like sometimes I'm on LinkedIn and one person might post something and there's like a whole lot of chatter and come, you know, comments and people have different opinions and it becomes very lively. And I enjoy that kind of thing because you see the kinds of opinions and the different way people think about things. And that gives you perspective. You know, so when you go in the interview, you can explain certain things with the perspective that you learn from being in these groups. And last but not least, you have to tweak your resume because your resume has its own job to do. The resume has to get you the call. The call gets you the interview. The interview gets you the job. So the resume has a big role to play as a big job. So you have to tweak your resume. And this is something I talked about in my other video called how to break into business analysis, which I highly recommend that you watch that because it gives you so many practical tips um, of what to do that you can start doing right now to break into this career. And I also did a video on how to become a business analyst, which talked about some other things as well, which is also very useful. So please go check them both out. So tweaking your resume, I talked about this already, but I, I can't say it enough. You have to look at the job description and there's a lot of information in there that you can use to your advantage. So you look at what they're asking for and then you look at your resume and you see how you can make the two match. You see what is it that they're asking for that I have done 
in another field, maybe at school in a project, but I can make it, I can massage it to kind of fit what they're asking for, right? So if you, let's say, for example, you worked in sales and they're looking for someone who can be a good negotiator. Well, you did sales and you were able to negotiate the deal. So you can tweak that to make it match a kind of business analyst requirement from the job, right? So you have these things that you can do. Please don't overlook them. It's important because every little thing that you do puts you one step closer to becoming a business analyst and getting your first business analyst job. And another thing to keep in mind is that you know you don't have the experience. So if you apply for certain jobs, you'll be more likely to get a chance than if you apply for others. So you want to look for a job that are entry level business analyst or tier one business analyst. You're unlikely, very unlikely to get a senior business analyst position or you know, tier three or like those kinds of higher level business analyst jobs are much harder to get if you have no experience. Unless you are working in some other field that you have a lot of domain knowledge, maybe you can slide in that way. But for the rest of us, if you're starting out from scratch with no experience, just coming from college or coming from another um, role, you're likely not gonna get a senior business analyst job. So when you see these jobs on the job portals that you go to, if you see something that says entry level or you know, just business analyst or even tier one, those are the jobs you should be applying for because you have a better chance of getting an interview for those jobs. Another thing that you can try is when you write your resume and you tweak your resume, everything is there, that's good. I like to recommend that you put a keyword section at the bottom of your resume and you put your business analysis keywords in there. So you're going to put business analysts, um, requirements, solicitation, stakeholders, um, you know, whatever keywords that you can come up with that are business analyst friendly. So there's a lot of them. <laughs> you can you just go through your, your Baba and you find a lot of them anywhere. But you want to put these keywords because some of these systems that you're applying for jobs, it's not really a person that's reading your resume. It's going through this filter and the filter is looking for certain keywords before it actually pushes those resume to the hiring manager. So you want to fill your resume with some of these keywords to make sure that this robot that's going to be reading these Word documents and PDF documents of the resumes actually can find you and suggest you to the hiring manager. So part of it is you want to make it human readable. So your resume has two, two parts of it, right? You make part of it human readable. So all of the part I talk about your, your education and your experience and why you want the job, all that stuff, that's all good and fine because when it gets in front of an actual person, they have to be able to read it. So you make it that way, you tweak it towards the job description, but you also need to, to go through the robots, right? You need it to be robot friendly as well. So you put your keyword section at the bottom and you put all these keywords that are relating to the job. You can get them from the job description itself, or you could just have a generic list of um, keywords based on business analysis terms. And you put that in there so that when the robot reads your resume, it can find you and suggest you, and you can land on a hiring manager's desk. Another resume tip is when you do your resume, you want to put the most relevant experience first. Because I know some of you, you've done several jobs. You've worked as a waitress. You worked in a retail store as an associate. You've done this and that. Now you want to break into the corporate world. And you're like, oh my God, I have so many different things I've done. And you just start putting them on your resume in random order. I mean, or you could put it in terms of the date. It's good to put things in chronological order. But I don't think that they would be too offended if you put the most relevant experience first to say this is the, the role I did that was closest aligned to the job I'm applying for, you know, so that that way they can see the most relevant thing first because sometimes they don't read the entire resume. Sometimes they read it and they scan it and they're just going through it fast. So you want the most impactful thing to be the first thing they read to make sure that you, you know, you get a call and you get to go for the interview. So those are the strategies that I think you should apply in order to get your first business analyst job. So there you have it, guys. These are the strategies I recommend 
for you to land your very first business analyst job. I want to welcome you to this career. So I think if you go out there, you apply these strategies, you will get that job. And I, I can't wait to hear from you. So please email me at carolisblog at gmail.com. Send me a message on my Facebook page and let me know how it's going. I want to hear these success stories. I love to hear people getting the job based on the strategies that I've exposed them to. And also, if you like this video, just, just like the video. If you like this content, just subscribe. I mean, I give you information, you subscribe and like. It's a win-win. So I would appreciate if you would do that. <laughs> so go out there. Follow these strategies, go get that job and get the money you deserve. You know, get the, the get to work in a field that you love that will give you a lot of options that you can you can grow in, that you can get a good salary for. Um, you deserve it. So you can do this. All right. So I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.